Hi folks, Harry Frank from Red Giant here, and in this tutorial, I'd like to cover what is new in Trapcode Mirror 2.0. Now, before we dive into it, let's make sure we all understand exactly what Mirror is, what it's about, and how it works. The overall idea is that Mirror starts with a two-dimensional flat plane, and we distort it in three dimensions using a fractal distortion. It's a simple approach that can yield a wide variety of, of results from landscapes to smoke effects and much, much more. The geometry section of Mirror is where we define the location, rotation, size, as well as the vertices in X and Y. The vertices are where we define the resolution of the surface. So how many points and planes make up the surface. And this brings us to our first change in Mirror 2.0. Up until now, the surfaces in Mirror have always rendered, taking every three vertices and forming a plane, basically rendering a surface with triangles. New to Mirror 2.0 is the ability to render with quads or four-sided polygons. Now, a great deal of the power of Trapcode Mirror comes from working with this fractal section to distort the 2D plane. New to Mirror 2.0 are several different fractal types that yield radically different results. Now, the fractal type of regular is how Mira has always behaved in the past. Now, just as a quick overview, what we're doing when we use these fractals is we stack layers of noise on top of each other. So we start with a very large layer of noise and then stack increasingly smaller layers of noise on top of that. So how those layers of noise relate to each other in terms of their scale and diminishing intensity from one layer to the next, those are the different types of algorithms that make up the fractal types. Now with a name like multi, you might think this would end up a little bit more complex, but actually what multi does is shift the focus to the lower areas of noise. So basically the larger areas of noise. So you'll see more focus on the large bumps caused by the fractal and less focus on those higher, smaller areas of noise that create the detail. It's still there, but much less. In quite a contrast to that, smooth ridge actually creates quite a bit of disruption in the surface, creating very sharp changes in the fractal noise distortion. This can be good when we're working with smoke and we want to create a, the look of sort of disrupted smoke like this. This actually can work pretty well. As you might guess, multi smooth ridge is basically a combination of these two settings up here. It's good to experiment and explore and try to find the ones that work best for you. Regular is a standard fractal noise distortion. I find multi works really well for things like smoke and basic water surfaces. Smooth ridge works for things that are highly disrupted, very chaotic flame smoke and very disrupted water surfaces. Multi smooth ridge ends up being a very organic looking surface not unlike a planetary kind of surface. Now, speaking of landscapes, Mir does this really well, anywhere from very stylized, low polygon landscapes to much more realistic mountain ranges. Now, one of the challenges up until Mir 2.0 was controlling the fractals in the right way. And what I mean by this is that when we create landscapes like this and apply fractal distortion, in the past, we've had resulting landscapes that push both in the positive as well as the negative direction. Now if you'd like to limit this to only be mountains that rise in one direction rather than create these negative areas that dip down, there is a newly added Z range section. This allows us to control the intensity that is applied to mirror in this Z axis. So changing this from unlimited to limit, we can take something like this Z maximum value and bring this to zero and essentially flatten this out. Now the reason we'd want to do this is from a top view like this, instead of having these mountain ranges that dip straight down, we can flatten those out and have a flat area that only rises up. You can also set this to compress and this will compress within a certain range which you can use to raise or lower like so. Now just above that is a really useful feature called Seamless Loop. Let me jump over to this smoke that I've got right here. So I have this nicely rising column of smoke that I've created. As it loops around in the composition from the very end to the beginning, it jumps because this is not set to seamlessly loop. And up until version 2, we have not been able to create any sort of seamless loop. So let's jump into the interface here and take a look at the Seamless Loop section. 
This might seem like a little bit of a dark art, but what we're doing with these sliders here in terms of loop evolution and loop X, Y, and Z, we are directly controlling that evolving loop point rendered by the fractal. So if I animate parameters like the evolution or offset X, Y, or Z, and I set a couple keyframes. So in this case, I've got keyframes at the very beginning. And just like we do with loops, we always set the last keyframe of any given loop, trap code mirror included, one frame beyond the last frame of the composition. So in the case of a four second composition, I would put myself right at four seconds. And I set a couple keyframes here. So I've got my evolution set to 300 and my offset Y set to negative 500. So often with fractal noise, you have things like angle controls that go from zero all the way to 360. And at that 360 revolution, we can have the noise loop upon itself. Instead of doing that, here what we're doing is simply defining where that loop point is. So I want these values to loop at 300 in the evolution and negative 500 in the offset Y. So I could simply go up here and type in those values. So I'll define 300 to be the loop point for the evolution and negative 500 to be the loop point for Y. And if I play through this, we'll see that this seamlessly loops. Easier way to do that is simply to queue up where that loop point is. And let's say these are reset. You can just go to this button and click that and it will grab those values directly from here. Now, if you queue yourself at the wrong point in time and click this, it's just gonna grab those values at that point in time and you're gonna have an incorrect loop. Another very cool thing that was added to version two is the ability to do a second pass with a wireframe. Now, personally, I know one of the things that I often did when I started using Mirror was duplicating the layer and adding a second wireframe pass on top. And this left me with two different layers of Mirror, and every time I made a change in one, I had to go and make a change in the other. So in the shader section, where we control how these things are rendered, if we're rendering with a flat renderer or a Fong renderer or density renderer, we've always had the ability to render with a wireframe view. But now we've got a second pass in here, so we can say, render a second pass using a wireframe. So if I turn this off, you can see it looks like that. If I turn this back on, we can overlay that wireframe right on top. Another very useful feature for low poly looks like this is when we are working with external textures. So in this case, I've got a simple texture map that looks like this. I've just created some fractal noise and I did a little bit of a tritone color map to it. In the texture section, I've defined that texture layer to be that texture composition. Now you'll notice in here that we've got different ways to apply this. So remember that my texture is a fairly detailed fractal noise. If I directly apply this texture map composition, it's basically going to map it directly to the surface. In a low poly look like this, we might want to round each face to the average color for each face. And that's exactly what this texture filter of solid face does. When it samples that texture layer, it will average the colors together for that face. One cool new thing that has been added is this feature called spiral. And what this does is spiral the mesh as well as the fractal distortion, adding a twist to the source 2D plane as well as the distortion. So that's on the surface of Mirror under the hood. You'll find optimized rendering that will render up to three times faster than before, as well as much improved VRAM management. So that, in short, is Mirror 2.0. I encourage you to play with all the new features and explore. My name is Harry Frank. Thank you so much for watching.